Admittedly, it doesn't entirely look it, but we're starting this stunning California Republic morning, as you can see, into the vast expanse of Los Angeles. In the most world car way possible, and that is a car that is forbidden fruit on these shores, really a small crossover, the Volkswagen T-Cross. This was the one, out of all the cars we're driving today, this is the one that I am most excited about because we can't get it here. My name is Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, though everybody calls me Sid, and I am the editor-in-chief for Car and Bike in India, also the NDTV Network's automobile editor, but uh, I am here as director of World Car Awards. The idea for me to be here is uh, not only test some of the nominated cars for the 2020 edition of the World Car Awards, but also uh, sort of make sure that the whole process goes off quite well for our jurors, who are all coming in from different parts of the world uh, to coincide with the LA Auto Show. Uh, once I'm out there actually with the cars, I think the key priority for me is to spend time with cars that I have not driven so far through the year, cars that we don't have in our market, cars or brands that we don't have access to otherwise very easily. And then the second priority is to also look at some of the cars that I may have driven before, but you know, where we get a different engine option maybe over here to drive with, or just to simply refresh my memory on them. And sometimes it's nice to be able to drive them alongside some of their key rivals within their own space, because back to back, you get a better sort of perspective. And now the Hyundai venue, getting on the 210. This is going to be interesting. We just got passed by a Prius. Ah, uh, wow, that's a lot of noise. But it's a small car. Um, <laughs> Having a hard time catching up with that Prius. But we're gaining on him. We're gaining on him. Here we go. Here we go. Please do not try this at home. And we passed the Prius. They sent the wrong engine, though. I mean, there are nicer engines on that that are going to be offered. I don't think we so get a nicer engine. I think we get one engine on those. You sure? Oh, well, not I just was yet. under the impression that you will have, like, a more powerful um, GDI engine. Yeah, they usually do a, 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 a non-turbo and a turbo. I don't know what they're doing in this country. Because we have the one liter turbo on that in India. Uh, another car that India got before the US, <laughs> like the Seltos, which didn't even show up to the test drives. It's amazing that you got to see that before we even saw it here at LA Auto Show. We saw it, drove it, people are buying it. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's it's that change that's happened at Hyundai Kia uh, when the likes of Biermann went across there, where you get better steering, nicer handling. Just And, and you know, it's not just a function of being more European. Uh, I think it's also the understanding of why that was important. I can't think of a better way to test acceleration than passing a Prius. So let's get behind him here and let's get offended by the Prius. Signal and foot to the floor. It's got to work a little bit harder than Volkswagen's equipped with the EA AAA. We a smaller engine here, but plenty for getting around town or most importantly, passing very slow hybrids. Come on, and what is it? How small is that engine? What engine is that thing? One liter TSI. Yeah, but how many cylinders? Hold on. Okay. Why is that making you happy? Because it's different. Because we can't have that here. Like, we can get a Mini that's like that, but this car, it actually works. Where I thought, even with the short wheelbase and uh, the, the, the very small engine, I could easily drive that thing around town, no problem. You no, wouldn't have known. If I, I would... If I told you that thing had a three-cylinder engine and you weren't a car guy, you'd be like, wow, three I can't believe it. Yeah. And I did like the overall interior, but I will say the scheduling I had was unfortunate to the T-Cross because that was the first car I scheduled because, of course, I wanted to get that and was most excited. And then I scheduled the venue right after it. Wasn't smart on my part because I got right out of the T-Cross, got into the venue, and immediately you step in the venue, you're like, Wow, this is this is a nice car. I like the design of the Volkswagen a bit better on the inside, but this one stands out more from the tactile feel. Clearly, I mean, we've been discussing this over the years, how Hyundai and Kia are kind of killing it in this area, and not just by the tactile feel. Like, this is so much better than what we saw in that Volkswagen, but it's also the buttons. Now, Volkswagen, they have buttons and knobs and that kind of stuff, but these guys, they really, uh, they've changed it a bit with this venue in that there's bigger buttons, there's bigger knobs, Knobs. I love this HVAC controller here. Uh, this, frankly, is a case study in UX design of what it should be. Not uh, literally, as I'm shooting this, uh, Ford is going to be debuting that Mach-E, the crossover that they're trying to put all the Mustang DNA in. 
And sure enough, they ripped off the interior design from a Tesla, which frankly is the most unsafe UX design in a car I've ever seen in my life. And that's why you see so many of them in uh, repair shops, body shops all around Los Angeles and most of the cities. And I can go around a turn here and I can pay attention to the road, but simultaneously if I really need to adjust the temperature, I can adjust the temperature. I don't have to sit here and look and try to find haptic feedback or say, oh, am I at 73 degrees or 75 degrees? The general design theme is the same that we've seen in other Volkswagens, so specifically that Jetta we drove, what, about two years ago, where overall I really like the design here, especially the fact that it has knobs and buttons. Thank you very much. But you can tell this is meant for a market where price point is much more important. So a lot of hard plastic here. I mean, it is not a pleasant place to be in terms of tactile feel. Other than that, this is a hell of a vehicle. That's been pretty much what Hyundai has been doing for some time. Everything you can see, it better impress you. I mean, they've been doing that. Volkswagen does a, does a fine job. No, like they're, that. they've been more about, like, it must be durable and good material and, and, and fit together perfectly. It took a long time for, for VW to catch up on stuff like that. I think with the, the T-Rock first and then the T-Cross, uh, they've kind of turned a corner. So they're trying to make the cars sort of colorful. And it's really one, one thing that... I, I couldn't get my head around. You're sending a car specially for just the world car jury all the way from Wolfsburg with Wolfsburg plates on it. And it's a car that when you did the global drive, uh, how many ever months ago, you positioned as youthful and, 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 you know, quirky. And this is us being different. This is not a Tiguan. This is supposed to be, it has a different character. So they did colorful uh, exterior paintwork, two-tone roofs, um, really interesting play of color on the dash and the seats. And then they send us a white car with a gray interior oh, for know. the test drive. Yeah. When they could have picked up like the, the, the aqua colored one with like, you know, orange highlights on the inside. There's some really cool stuff they've done. It amazes me. So this is a lot of inside baseball. Wheels that what, were colorful. What a lot of the, the people that watch don't understand is the worst <laughs> color to shoot is a white car. For us to assess it, it, it exuded quality. But it didn't give me that, here's the new Volkswagen. Here's how we've changed things. This is how we're mixing it up. Yeah. You know, it was still the really nice steering, great black dashboard, very well put together screen. Everything, everything had a nice sort of solid, chunky feel to it. They could have given us a car that, that kind of really showed you what the T-Cross is mm -hmm. supposed to be all about. Um, that was the only thing I had a problem with, but I, yeah, I loved how it drove. Mm -hmm. The engine, uh, we've been driving their small TSIs for a while, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the three-cylinder, I've dri driven the same engine on the T-Rock mm -hmm. earlier, and have been, and that was a manual, so I was really impressed with that as well. Um, they're going to be making this engine in India from next year, so we are getting the T-Cross with this engine. Here as we hit an overpass where you get some more expansion joints, and this part of the road ain't perfect, you'd expect a lot more complaining from the rear suspension, because let's be honest, the componentry back there in a vehicle like this, not exactly uh, the stuff of Legends or 911s. Uh, but pretty well composed for the vehicle and the job that it's supposed to do. Now off the freeway, but going over it. So we're going over some expansion joints. The road's not exactly perfect here. And the thing that really stands out here is this is a, this is a short wheelbase car. So it doesn't have quite the suppleness that say a larger SUV, even like a Rogue would have. But what's interesting about this, I would expect this to be like a choppy ride. And even if I get really aggressive here, as I'm driving past the Pasadena Police Department, please don't tell them. Uh, the ride is still pretty good. I have to say, it, the, the ride quality holds up. To, to give respect to the fact that in many markets, and even in the developed markets now, there is a need for you know practical and yet compact. Uh, it could be luxurious and yet compact. Um, it could be green and yet compact. Uh, and which is why the urban category has actually done quite well. A little bit behind the scenes here. Every car has its own envelope. Got uh, the keys for the car here. Uh, information about the car here and then each of them has obviously the uh, parking to get in and out of the Westin which is the base of operations for world car and that is the Kia Soul EV which we're gonna drive later okay so let's prioritize what's important here yeah. we drove a bunch of cars together I mean really a good bunch. stuff yeah now we can't Did you really drive all of them Did you I drove, drive everything on that well, list? I drove everything on the list it's 22 but, cars but not necessarily during the three days in Pasadena. I don't know. What I mean is that, like, I, I know that you've probably driven a bunch of them before anyway. Yes, sir. Like the Telluride I had driven, Palisade I had driven before, XT6 I had driven before. 
So I, I was focusing on a, on a subset that I couldn't drive or hadn't, or hadn't driven. driven. The yeah. only car I drove, there were two cars I drove that I had driven before, but an opportunity to drive a 992 in an M8 competition, you're going to take every bite at the apple you can get. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, and by the way, the Z4 that you, you beat up on, the gray one, uh, that's going to be turning up here this weekend. Oh, okay. So apparently we didn't do enough damage to it, so they were able to turn <laughs> it over to me. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, this is my first time doing this. We, we're not going to tell people what is going to be the world car. We're going to tell them that in New York. Well, we what? don't know it yet. This camera flew off on this turn here where you can see the Supra and the Z4 going together. This flew off right here, came out of the housing. See this? But the camera still works. Anyway, uh, back to the T-Cross. <laughs> 